Okay. Yeah, just check if Auntie June's made it on. Is Auntie June on live? She really wanted to see me. Just check Auntie June's on. Yeah. Well, I know. I'm hoping to look smart. Not dressed up for something like this. It's a big occasion. You never know. The Queen might be watching. And uh, she might be thinking about a new honours list already. You know what I mean? Getting them in the bank ready for next year. So, you never know who's watching. Are we ready to go? Okay, yeah. Still not set. Uh-huh. Yeah, hang on. Auntie June. Put Auntie June on the phone. And let's just, oh, she can do it on catch up. Oh, you who? Hi! Hi! Welcome, everybody. Um, thanks for joining me here today in the woods in a local patch to me. Um, I'll let it begin because I'm dead excited about this. First of all, thanks to the Wildlife Trust for inviting me on um, to talk about this. And what is this? It's a splendid fungus, isn't it? So, a fungus as opposed to a mushroom. A mushroom is something we think of, we, we class as having a cap and a stem underneath, like you might buy in the supermarket, but this is a fungus. They're both types of fungi. What kind of fungus is this? This is a bracket fungus. You know what I've not done? I've not told you what it is, have I? You need to know what this is. This is the chicken of the woods. And what an incredible, I'll explain why, shortly why it's called chicken of the woods. Um, but let's just think about what an incredible thing this is. Uh, people get themselves in the right tis trying to find this. And you know what? This is very unusual, but for one of the only times ever, with fungi, there's certain ones on your hit list, and you, as you get into it, it's a bit of a hobby thing. I really want to find that thing. It never happens. You don't really go out and look for something and find it. However, this is one of the few occasions I've ever done that. I went out hoping to find this, looking in the right habitats and the right host trees, and sure enough, boom shakalak, found it. Doesn't always work that way. That, that way. So I'm going to share a few tips now about what this is how you might find it. Uh, so first of all, seasonality. Obviously we're in springtime, late spring now we're in May, which is a classic time for these guys to start uh, fruiting, the fruit bodies to appear through the trees. And it is fruiting really well this year. It's fruiting in abundance. I'm getting reports all across the country of this really doing well. Yesterday I found five different trees with it growing on in one similar area, but nevertheless, just don't usually see those kind of fruitings. So it could be you that spots one. This season you could do it. Now, with lots of fungi, their season might only be, uh, their fruiting period might only be a couple of weeks, um, maybe even days or even hours for some fungi, and they're gone. The fruit comes up and gone again, the body. Way through till autumn time. So it's a great season, so one to bear in mind for the season ahead now that you might find it. Now, where might you find chicken of the woods? Um, well, because this is a bracket fungus, bracket fungi are traditionally found on dead or dying trees and often standing wood. Uh, so, and usually, yeah, for mushrooms, often and fungi, we're looking down at path edges and in the woods and in the shrubbery. Not so for these. Actually, look up. There's some wonderful bracket fungi up high, but this one often is high in the tree. Today, fortunately for me, it's at eye level. Doesn't always happen like that either. It's a classic setup, this. All things coming together to make this work. Um, so, yeah, dead or dying trees and usually standing wood. But I've no big limbs I found when you stay that have come off a tree and it's still fruiting on the, the limb that's dead on the floor. Um, what kind of host tree? What is the host tree for these? Well, they are, they only like to sit with certain trees, like lots of fungi have these relationships with certain trees. This one, most commonly found on oak. Um, for my case, I've found it on nothing but willow at the moment, this, this season, uh, but it also likes beech and cherry and sweet chestnut as well. It can also grow on yew, which is unusual because it doesn't grow on conifer otherwise. It can also grow on yew trees. Um, okay, so that's a little bit of a season and the host type. Now, I talked about it being a bracket fungus which means it disperses its spores in a different way. Oh, uh, I just realised there's loads of beautiful willow uh, thingies flying through the air, that like the seeds, the fluff, willow fluff. It looked a moment like a daddy day, like dandruff. Um, don't be mistaken, I, actually I do have that, but I, can, I, uh, I treat it well with a good uh, shampoo. Uh, so today, if there's any of that going on, it's the willow fluff. Um, okay, back to got distracted by the willow fluff there, things falling from the sky. Um, it's beautiful around here. Pause, take a breath, think about what you're going to say, polypore. Underneath here, where a mushroom drops its seeds, its spores, from under the gills, they fly off into the wind. Okay, this guy does the same, drops its spores, but from pores underneath. Hey, little science word for today, pores. Okay, it drops its pores from underneath through tiny little holes, which are pores, okay? We have pores in our skin, of course, which is where we sweat from. Tiny little holes in our skin. If you look really, really close, you can see them. So this is a porous. It's called latiporous. Latiporus 
so furious, which always sounds like I'm so furious, so furious. Sulfur being the bright yellow that this is, the porous side. This underside where the pores are is a beautiful, I mean, how striking is that? Bright lemon yellow, just gorgeous or sulfur yellow. Now this, in terms of lookalikes, if you're looking around and think, is this it, is it not? Okay, when it gets to this stage, I would say you can't mistake it for anything else. These beautiful yellow and orange topped shell and sharp. Maybe that would be better. Okay, unmistakable, I'd say. Slightly way the edge, like almost like giant fans. In its younger stage, it could be mistaken for some other things. Uh, you could argue it could be mistaken for maybe a young dryad saddle in that, that kind of blob form. It starts out as a blob and then it starts to, 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 to branch off and make these, these shells. Could be a dryad saddle. Could be something called a giant polypore. The difference with that one is that giant polypore will bruise as you press it and rip the flesh, okay? That will tear, great ID feature. Now I would argue there's one other yellow blob that hangs around it. It's very early stage, it's just a yellow blob on the side of a tree. There are also other yellow blobs called the dog vomit slime mold. Okay, if you find that, keep an eye on it. Don't, if, if you prod it, the texture will be all sticky. It's got a right textured surface. That's dog vomit slime mold, something different to this. So if you do have a patch near to you, keep your eye on it, monitor it, because you'll be able to see this growth. It grows incredibly fast over two weeks from a ball to this, to kilos in weight, fantastic stuff. Um, now, what is its job? Quick, quick word about what its job is. Its job is a, is a recycler. It's a saprobe, another word. Yeah, come on, proper science here, learning. It's a saprobe, okay? Which means a sapratroph uh, recycles and feeds off dead and dying uh, wood, okay? Or the detritus of, of the woods. So, interestingly, this is also a mild parasite. What I haven't determined yet is if it's this that killed the tree, or if it's also parasitic at the same time, then creates the dead wood, which it then feeds off. But actually this wood is still living. It's obviously dying now, but it's still living. A huge, beautiful canopy up there of willow. Um, so yeah, a mild a mild parasite, but also mainly a saprobe, uh, feeds off that, that dead wood. These guys are crucial to our ecosystem. All of fungi are, and they all have a different role to play. But these ones, the bracket fungi largely, are the recyclers. Uh, of all these huge pieces I find very hard to break down in the natural world it's the fun guys job to do it and they do such a good job and they do a good job of looking good while they're at it what a beautiful thing so I think that's about it from me listen you don't have to be in a beautiful little woodland this is just up the road from me I live in quite an urban area loads of houses and stuff it's just over the road from a park lots of runners dog walkers and people on BMX's and no one's bothered me which makes me feel better because I get a bit I get a bit of a flap on when that happens but you can find these close to you. They may be on a cherry tree at the end of your garden. They may be near parks. Check those out. I've found a couple on cherry trees in parks before now. So thanks parks for joining me today. And I uh, hope to see you again sometime soon. Okay, goodbye and happy hunting. Bye. Oh, is Auntie June listening? Did she like it? Oh, how do you turn it off? Not done that before. No. Hi guys, you can just enjoy the chicken. I tell you what, if anyone's still there, if anyone's still there, if anyone's still there, um, I'll just show you this. I said I'll explain why it's called chicken of the woods. Well, some, some monkeys or somebody has knocked this off onto the floor. There's a little bit of the shelf on the floor there. And this is a great chance to show you that it actually breaks the flesh, breaks. Look at that, like cooked chicken. Look at that. But please don't go putting this in your mouth, okay? Uh, yeah, like cooked chicken. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Right, now I'm going to go and find the button to shut and, and, and stop the live broadcast. Okay, so you can go about your business now. You can go and uh, clean the fridge or whatever it is you were going to do. Have a cup of tea. All right. I'm looking for the button. That's it. Bye. <laughs>